stick to just one particular band that has that is doing well then Oshim died which was quite a setback I had certain other things in my mind which I was not being able to explore with Indian Ocean although I enjoyed the time when we were really creative and created really I think Depths of the Ocean I composed before forming Indian Ocean but it never got included in uh, the Indian Ocean's repertoire as I've questioned things about what is the family? What is uh, what? What, uh, what is this whole concept of nations? I also do not believe in boundaries. Any institution that demarcates one set of people from the other is detrimental for human growth. Look, hegemony is there. Money is also hegemony, right? This line may be like If you are doing it because of that, then I don't think you will ever do justice to music. Thank you for tuning in. Impart Diaries usually gives you news analysis and commentaries on geopolitics and current affairs, right? But today you must be surprised, you must be pleasantly surprised to find that we are with the music legend Shushmit Sen. So let's find out what he has to tell us because at the end of the interview you will realize that not only music only, his words also have a lot of meaning for generations to come. Thank you Shushmita for joining us. Thank you for having me here. You created Indian Ocean. You made it a big thing. It was uh, it was it was a milestone in Indian mm-hmm. music. After that, you went on to uh, create a second innings for yourself and for music lovers. So, could you tell us what made you make that jump? Ah, whether it was a jump or not, I um, I realized that beyond a point, even if it is your uh, creation, um, it. Uh, that does not mean that you have to stick to it for the for the rest of your life. Uh, I was there with them for about 23 and a half years, and that's quite a lot. Um, I had certain other things in my mind, which I was not being able to explore with Indian Ocean. Um, although I enjoyed the time when we were really creative and created really, I think, good music. Um, but I wanted to explore it even more in my own way. Therefore, I took that step of leaving Indian Ocean and uh, starting my own, um, another band and um, exploring some of, some of my own compositions, which was not possible with Indian Ocean. So, um, any longer, any longer. So, that's why this, uh, what you call is a jump, I say a change. So, what was it about the new compositions? What is the philosophy behind it and the music behind it that made you decide that okay, let me let me go for this now? You know, the when you create and when you create very uh, honestly, um, intellectualizing it by saying that this is uh, you know there is uh, an ideology and things like that. It does not happen like that. It has not happened with me. But when I see the the co-musicians who I'm working with, whether they are comfortable with the newness that I was trying to get and so on, if they are not, then um, like say, Depths of the Ocean. Depths of the Ocean I composed before forming Indian Ocean. But it never got included in uh, the Indian Ocean's repertoire.
and then there were so many other compositions which were brewing and i was still with the indian ocean but it uh, i could see a resistance from the others to take those into the repertoire so the only way out was to to break out of it and do it myself so this kind of uh, it also uh, uh, goes along with a trend also in uh, world music as well we've seen people like john lennon mm. ozzy osbourne and sting they they had established band mm. and then they moved on and they did even better according to a lot of uh, music <coughs> connoisseurs well i'm not familiar with ozzy osbourne's music yes sting i know that he did flourish after he left the band or whether the band was still there or not i do not know John Lennon was a completely a different case because the band broke up. So it was not just one person breaking away from uh, this thing. Uh, in fact, um, I also have a lot of respect for, say, uh, Paul McCartney. Paul McCartney, I think, is the most underrated bass player in the world. I think his bass playing was absolutely superlative. Um, his compositional uh sing a lot of composition in beatles were his um and john lennon yes i again huge respect for that one particular number imagine which which put him utopical but amazing what is it about imagine that you like the most it's about showing the people that there is there can be togetherness there can be life without boundaries so that's uh, something which goes very well with my thought process and uh, i also do not believe in boundaries i have always tried to propagate as much togetherness and so on so any kind of boundaries i've questioned things about what is the family what is uh, what what, a, what is this whole concept of nations being proud of being on this side of the border is something which i i just can't mm, uh, be it within myself to say that yes i i actually support this kind of thought process i can't do it so lakh liot kor lo mvina yo lakh bayot ekh korim lakh salma ani tamam aval korim lizrizi לא משנה, את חייבת ללכת. שכח לי, אני עושה ששרתי. You do not believe in the concept of artificial borders. Absolutely, any any institution that demarcates one set of people from the other is detrimental for human growth as a society. That's what I believe. ओशियन Indian Ocean for more than two decades, and then once again, you seem to uh, break a barrier, barrier, and then go beyond that and establish something else. What we see right now. So, hmm. does this is this an extension of your philosophy of your thoughts? Yes and no. Um, uh, the fact that uh, to stick to just one particular band that has that is doing well. then oshim died which was quite a setback although oshim knew uh, ultimately i was wanting to 
लीव द बैंड when ashim died it was uh, a completely something told me that i have to bring this whole thing back on the road so uh, now the person who sings out there himanshu joshi he, i had brought him in to the band i had suggested nikhil rao that he should replace and another thing is that it was a known fact within all the band members that when we had crossed 20 years of togetherness and creating stuff i said i used to tell them that if you think that you have created a legacy then that the legacy has to continue and how will it continue we cannot continue to play the way we are playing we have to you know give our space to the younger generation right so that was another thing that was there in our in my mind so you wanted newer faces and newer newer members yeah newer faces meaning that um at least there was a philosophy behind the music and why we did not follow genres and why i never ever have played a single cover right mm-hmm. um should that legacy if you could involve younger people and uh, instill it instill this particular idea in their minds that this is a way to go so do not try to copy or get influenced too much by other uh, people you like other kinds of music brilliant i think that every musician should have one of the things while learning music whether it's a guitar it's a piano or whatever i think this whole education of of uh, of introdu- introducing the students or young musicians uh that you should actually hear a lot of music from around the world mm-hmm. and um, and there is brilliant music all over the place unfortunately because of the english and the western he- uh, hegemony the um i see when people talk about, about genres they talk about either indian music or it is western music which is by the blues or jazz but there are there's so much more music or if you go to the eastern europe you go to russia mm-hmm. you can't imagine the kind of music that there is south america africa so uh, actually from all over the place you get beautiful music Hegemony yep. of Western music. So, can you expand on this? Because a lot of youngsters, a lot of followers of music and art and entertainment, they are not they are not used to seeing this as hegemony. They see it as an they often see it as an advanced form of culture that is that we have to follow. 
they they surpass indian classical music and they think that is advanced stage of music i think it's a laughable matter right uh, in the same way um look hegemony is there money is also hegemony right the western uh, world is is the one that is controlling most of the culture in fact if you ask me us they one of the most you know most uh, usual ways to propagate america as uh, one of the uh, best countries and things like that is to so their their cinema is highly highly advertised popularized all over the world lot of people may disagree with it so initially all the good musicians were blacks at one point of time and suddenly one elvis presley comes and becomes so close to the president and he is like shown as something completely different well he was good i'm not saying that he was not good but um that's how it was um whereas whereas if you do not know about this elvis presley never played outside his own country oh is it he never yeah. toured he toured within the country but never went abroad no knowledge. that's a knowledge i have look the thing is that in us about 60 to 70 people percent of the people don't even uh, uh, go to any other state than their own state maybe i'm exaggerating a little maybe 50% definitely so so um in separate states people do live in their own cocoons or in their own wells mm. and you mentioned uh, elvis presley so in that context i have a related question which is that uh, there was a point of time when music all over the world and in india also music meant listening hmm. it was all about listening hmm. uh, later on uh, because television exploded onto the scene mm. and because corporates and corporations started taking over mm. and turning music into a kind of a business they decided to they seem to have decided to make it visual more visual alongside the listening fact so suddenly instead of listening it also became it had to be visually appeal, appealing for it mm. to work mm. so you had this explosion of uh, music videos yeah so then the michael jacksons happened then the madonnas happened and mm. then suddenly the performer the mu- the the musician had to be a, a visual performer as well so what is your take on that look the thing is that in in uh, especially western music this visual effect was a very important thing e- even when television was not at its peak right say Ch- chuck berry mm-hmm. chuck berry is the duck walk yeah right at that point of time you did not have the televisions which is which will but but the crowds used to love it people who want to watch that. yeah and then there came a time where the heavy metal band started breaking their own instruments mm-hmm. right even uh, uh, jimmy hendrix did that that uh, became the talking point yeah that became the talking point so visual attraction became a very important thing so dancing during um, uh, your performance obviously michael jackson is one of the uh hallmarks for for that kind of uh, thing but now you see it in indian music also sunidhi chauhan i mean her acts are supposedly fantastic and they are i'm not saying that i have nothing against michael jackson dancing so beautifully on stage so as he he had that capability and it did but if a, if a song becomes important because of its music video hmm. 
if the music video is not good enough then then the song's rating goes down or at least its popularity goes down don't you think it hampers number one the quality of the music that is produced and secondly doesn't it also discourage uh, musicians from focusing entirely on on the music because they have to focus also on the uh, on on the on the visual of it and i won't really agree with it fully maybe in some cases that's true i would not say it in in the case of michael jackson definitely or if i see uh, beyonce or uh, what's the lady's name who did that um, football shakira shakira their performances are also great and i think their music is also great um it's time for africa i i really love that song and i really love the dance too so uh, uh so it's look the thing is that now that we are only talking about the big wigs have you heard of a trio called trio mandeli so they are from georgia they're three girls so one girl is playing something like it's not a guitar but she strums it like a guitar she plays it beautiful the other two girls sing along and all their videos are they are actually walking through the roads and they are recording their song on a uh, on a mobile phone and you won't believe what beautiful quality they come out with if there's a dog barking that is also there in the uh, the thing and they involve the crowd and i think it's brilliant music it's visual too you must watch it They are from Georgia, which was erstwhile USSR at one point of time. Um, so that is also there. So unfortunately, we only talk about the things that we have seen, and that the larger, you know, percentage of the population has seen. Mm-hmm. But uh, I, I've, I've noticed that in India, hardly any people have actually heard the the trio Mandeli. In, in your lifetime, you have seen a phase when musicians were more independent. Musicians were they were less uh, less centralized in the way they would be handled and they would be received. And things transitioned to a point where you know MNCs, corporations, and corporate networks they started trying to take ownership of music. It became it came to a point where now musicians are told to do this, told to do that. They have Absolutely. to maintain themselves in certain ways. They have to follow orders. So, how have you seen this this transition of commercialization of music? Music becomes look. It was there earlier also. I remember when Indian Ocean just started off. There was one band which was uh, released by uh, this company called Crescendo. Now I'm forgetting. I had met the owner. I'm forgetting the name of the guy. So he had broken away from most probably. Uh, Magna Sound, and he started this. And I remember there were contracts with bands where they changed the names of each and every band member. They had to be Christian names, okay. huh? So that the Western I Western world is going to recognize it. And the 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 the, the, the those people actually changed their names, stage names. So and it didn't it? It used to happen at that point of time. I'm talking about thirty three, thirty four years back. So uh, again, I forget the name of that particular band. Yeah, they did not do well, but it was a, a kind of a, um, fad that the owner of the company had, mm-hmm. and therefore he thought this is going to make things great. You know, um, like uh, I met this guy who was the drummer for. Uh, what is that European band which finally settled in? His name is 
some rick so he told us exactly how it happened deaf leopard deaf leopard okay deaf leopard so deaf leopard uh, so they became popular and then this guy lost his arm then his girlfriend at that point of time she really had a huge role to play how to you know use other mechanical stuff to play all the different parts of the drum kit and he continued that then they went to the us and then new uh, now they were rock at that point of time mm-hmm. so new management came in and he had told us the story because we were recording at a uh, studio in vardhapalam which is about 2 hours away from uh, chennai uh, but it's in andhra pradesh and he was there it was an ashram um mm, He had visited the ashram. He had visited the ashram because of his girlfriend, who was a major part of his life at that point of time. She was. She believed in this Kalki Bhagwan. Okay. Okay. And his son owned the studio where we were uh, working. And uh, yeah, I obviously do not believe in this these uh, these cult figures. And uh, then it will be a different topic that we will be discussing for the rest of. for another few hours um so he was there and i remember when there would be some puja or some session that is a yoga session and he didn't want to leave us in the you know uh, when we were recording but he did go he had to go so the new um, manager uh, in the us he said that now you're going to make popular songs and you are going to make songs which is liked by young girls because the young girls are going to attract their boyfriends and being you know uh white and the mother yes and that's exactly what he did what they did def leppard from being a proper rock band yeah. became a pop band pop. right so and this became more popular yeah so there are people who succumb to it there are people like the beatles or the pink floyd i i, I think any manager would have been kicked out immediately in fact i quite liked what uh, Roger Waters. Mm-hmm. So, now, like an activist. He is an activist. In fact, uh, okay. face Facebook uh, wanted uh, brick in the wall. They were giving these guys unimaginable, un- uh, unimaginable uh, amount of money to give the compositions to them so that they can uh, use it for Facebook's promotion. Hmm. Zuckerberg, right? Zuckerberg. Zuckerberg. and immediately roger waters you know asked for a press conference you should see that it's he's amazing now he's just going hammer and tongs <laughs> yeah 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 and what he says in front of the camera and the mics is <laughs> hilarious but again the whole world is not seeing this with an offer of a huge huge amount of money and the answer is fuck you no fucking way and i i only mention that because this is an, an insidious it's the insidious movement of them it's the same case with eric clapton as well he could have jolly well played along with the system but he did not he decided to go against it and maybe that he saw that his market is going to grow because of that one does not know one does not know this has got to stop enough is enough I can't take this BS any longer. It's gone far enough. You wanna claim my soul? You'll have to come and break down this door. Look, uh, Eric Clapton is also one guy who, when he saw Jimi Hendrix, Jimi Hendrix became popular in, in uh, England. He was not doing well in uh, the US, mm-hmm. so he came to England, and for the first time, these guys, uh, people like. Uh, Eric Clapton saw him, and um, he, I think the term that he used is that why is he? I mean, how is he playing a spaceship? Because he thought the Fender Stratocaster is a spaceship. Because other, earlier they used to play the Gibson. Mm-hmm. Uh, later on, I think he changed to the Fender uh, himself. I think I'm not very sure. And then when Jimi Hendrix died, and people wanted to contact him to get one bite out of him, he didn't. he was not available he was not available i've i've heard look eric clapton is 
I'm I'm not a fan of this music. Uh, firstly, firstly, he he played mostly covers. Mm-hmm. Well, did things to it. That's a different thing. Most of his big hits are not his songs. Mm-hmm. You know that. Okay. No, it's not his song. No, not at all. Um, uh, Cooking was, I think, JJ Kale. Okay. okay. Uh, I think I'm not very sure. They, they did albums together, I think. Okay. I, I look. He's a good guitar player. He is not a great guitar player. Mm-hmm. And you know, he has made comments like that that only me and Jeff Beck can. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, make the guitar mm-hmm. express the way we do. Am I going to compare him with Jeff Beck? <laughs> Unbelievable. I mean, this is like forcing yourself onto uh, the audience that I am this. But no, sorry. There are loads of other... From England itself, there are so many guitar players who are way better than Brian May. Mm-hmm. Can you compare him with Brian May? Sorry. <laughs> I am... Who would be your favorite tree from the transatlantic uh, guitar? Transatlantic? This is not transatlantic. Transatlantic will be US, right? It would cover both. Uh, At both sides. Yeah. Uh, I'm a person who has been a bit hesitant about saying that, you know, I just love Brian May definitely is one of the biggest legends. Jeff Beck is another. Um, who else would I talk about? Look, other people, I have seen certain works of theirs, uh, but they have do not have the repertoire that these kind of people have already created, right? So they are Gatti Govan. I mean, I love the guy's capabilities, even on a fretless. Um, but, but again, he does not have that plethora of work behind him. Mm-hmm. Let him do that. Let him do that. Anything about Pink Floyd that uh, you connect with a lot because they have these, they used to have these long pieces, which are not very vocal focused. Huh. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. I, I, I have always liked Pink Floyd. I have always liked Pink Floyd. Um, there's no doubt about it. So, um, off late, I have not been following them much. Although, I, they are not playing together. Uh, so, Gilmer is playing separately, I think. Uh, but uh, Pink Floyd had the poise. You know, in in the Western genre, the, the rock scene. I They rarely got to see poise in their... Whereas, in my opinion, voice is a very important thing in music. Yeah, uh, what is the reason why? Uh, why? It's diff- difficult to... Look, the thing is that my one of the greatest influences when I was growing up, especially when I was in late school and in college, was Indian classical music. Indian classical, if you don't have the poise, then you're nowhere. So it's like meditation, which you do not got to get to see in today's date anymore. So in my opinion, when I was growing up, I I watched live Nikhil Banerjee, Ali Akbar Kasab, Kumar Gandhar, um, Bhim Sen Joshi, Malik Arjun Mansoor. They used to meditate. And that was so uh, infectious. Anybody has gone, who has gone through that. Um, Nikhil Banerjee is one of his favorite. Oh, yes. Oh, absolutely. I, th- I think I think Nikhil Banerjee probably is one of the finest instrumental players on earth ever. And then coupled with his poise and his skills, although. Again, Nikhil Banerjee had the skills, he did it, but it not to show it off. In today's day, Indian classical you hear, it is only showing off. I stopped going for Indian classical music. 
So the poise that I'm talking about, which can which can take you to a completely another world. If I have heard any saying uh, the rock scene or uh, you know things like that, I would definitely talk about Pink Floyd. You're not in a hurry, right? Huh. But you have caught the audience by the collar. So listen to this. And that is precisely what this your, the music from your new innings hmm. also does to audiences. Well, thank you. commercialization of music and mm. the corresponding culture illusion like um, people's attention span has gone down mm. is the same case with a lot of popular artists also mm. Mm. people want quick numbers yeah and uh, so uh, doesn't this impact the quality that is supposed to come out from musicians look commercialization is something which uh, um it definitely has it definitely has but the people who are who get into the the commercial aspect of it they are doing it for money right and uh, whether whether they could do well with the poise and other things that i'm talking about um without going commercial um i have a doubt they themselves probably would not have been there now when is it when when a corporate sees that this particular uh person can be popularized and therefore where we spend that money we'll get it back too mm-hmm. so that's when the, this thing uh, these kind of things happen there's something else in my mind also so uh <clears throat> so a lot of nonsense can can be popularized and um, uh if you if you hammer the ears of the listeners time and again about five times a day they are listening to the same thing they it becomes a kind of a fad right and that's that how it becomes a benchmark right right so uh, uh. so therefore we have instances like you know a very popular cold drink company hmm. we have a popular coffee company they are not essentially into the business of music but they have they kind of produce musical shows now you know hmm. what i'm talking about yeah. So, and they call it folk fusion whatever they want to call it they call it look for a long time i have been saying this that any art form original art form the moment you industrialize it you kill it so i have seen say rajasthan i've worked a lot with the rajasthani folk musicians because when i was in uh, this thing i wanted to actually create a, a, a double album set with uh, the langas and the manganias and i had done a lot of research on that the murchan kya ya everything hmm. the manganias have the kamaicha they have the sindhi sarangi and uh, when i used to go and listen to the stalwarts and none of them are any more i mean they all died the reporter that they had you know you could get goosebumps you could cry to that music mm-hmm. which today's generation the younger ones who just want to go to coke studio coke studio is their ultimate mm-hmm. and then go and sing in bollywood and things like that 
those these youngsters have actually forgotten those numbers now i also have forgotten the names of those numbers the depth of that particular music was there with the older guys where commercial commercial commercialization had not happened with them right so even the moment the decision was taken by corporates to take over i would say bollywood to begin with why why would you say bollywood to begin with because they chose to the moment they said that you know this is a thing that is coming out to be a fad and things like that they started pulling out uh, people and uh, getting those rajasthani tunes into their uh, music and none of the serious stuff they would take they will only take the frivolous stuff it's something like this uh, uh, nirmal and the chaudhary you must have heard right so uh, his songs like nai are ah uh, his songs is slow um, amazing bhatiyali tunes which he had sung uh, are not actually known to people what is uh, uh, known to people is i'll tell you shohak chand bodoni doni i'm not saying it's a bad song but it is definitely no way close to his in depth uh, comparatively lighter piece yeah but they claim from their end that this is our way of trying to bring the marginalized and the side line old music to the forefront this is how they want to project it who who's that they by they i mean bollywood and uh, commercial uh, this is their that is that is their way of doing it i think that is the way that they are doing it why they are doing is to maybe maybe um suppress a lot of guilt that they have or probably they do not have the depth to know that they are doing something wrong do you do you think a lot of musicians of of your generation are aware and they they feel bad about this uh, uh this uh, invasion of this corporate invasion into music this dictating terms okay so when you say most of the musicians from my generation if you say that then i probably do not belong to that generation because there used to be a baba sagar also right. right all those things happened there then also i will never think of baba sagar doing anything in depth right um and i personally frankly speaking since i formed a band and i stuck to that my interactions with other musicians were very minimal mm-hmm. right because i thought that it is in the notion this is what is going to create um in fact all my other band members had far more interactions with other people other musicians and so on well that's okay i mean i'm i'm not mm-hmm. saying that i missing out on that but yeah my 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 personal get up is such that i do not just go like when you say when there is a, when they say that the musical fraternity ha mm-hmm. huh, artist fraternity i find it a bit weird when the people say that that we will all come together and fight for our rights and so on whereas i think the creative process in um, anything uh, creative painting music dance and various things is very individualistic suddenly you want to form a clique because your yes there should be that the government should look into what the artists should get like what happens in europe in us yes. 
they really look after uh, their own people. During the pandemic, actually, when they realized that musicians are not doing well, so they were given money to survive. In fact, some of the musicians that I've met from Europe, they said that we earned more during the pandemic. We got coverage. Yeah. yeah. Even more. No, no, not coverage. The government paid the money to live. And they said, we, we were not making that kind of money. So that is... So that... that is look, if you want to cater to expressions through artists and so on and so forth, uh, then one should. Like, I'll tell you, when the pandemic happened, uh, the people of Holland, they actually talk, started talking about and asking the government, what are you doing with the prostitutes? Uh, prostitutes? Mm -hmm. Because that's one of the one major source yeah. of money and they will not get to earn. Okay, so the government actually looked into it and they compensated them. Now, whether we as a country, I can't think of this. Krishna, we live in times when pressures of the show business industry, they demand uh, musicians you know, to express themselves with their body language mm. much more than before. Almost to an extent to make it look like a show and all that. But we see exactly the opposite when we see you perform. Mm. Uh, even during your uh, Indian Ocean days and even right now. Mm. So uh, you don't seem, I mean, you don't give the impression that a musician is not required mm. to do all that, uh, you know, that body language mm. uh, expression. Can, uh, th does it cross your mind sometimes when you see musicians around you also jumping around and expressing themselves a lot? <laughs> um, look, the thing is, uh, when I played the guitar, there, is, there are certain songs at times I used to stand up while I was with uh, Indian Ocean to, to play it standing up. That's all I did. I was not moving and jumping or anything of that sort. But uh, firstly, the kind of music that I play, it's very difficult to jump around and not concentrate on what you're playing. Mm -hmm. But there are people who, who can do that. Jimmy Hendrix did it. So there are people who can do that. I can't. And I never practiced it like that, that I'm doing that to most of the, some from Van Halen to so many other people who, who do a lot of intricate stuff and yet they are moving around and, uh, you know, physically playing to the audience. It has never happened to me. And you don't also don't wear that you know, that rock star's body language also. <laughs> I'll tell you one story. Uh, not just once. This has happened so many times. This is in Bangalore. We were playing and on the roof of a high-rise building, an office building. So there was one particular lift which would go straight to the top where the performances would happen. So we did our sound check. Then we went back to the hotel. And 
individually we were going back to the space so that I, I had a car so I went to that space and there were these uh, bouncers at the lift um, and they refused to let me in <laughs> telling them look at that poster I am he okay <laughs> and there was a no 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 ticket kind of pass kind so then the, the the audience started arriving and um, when are you starting? And whenever they, they allow me to go and perform, <laughs> no, no. to the extent that can I buy you a ticket? <laughs> Bangalore. <laughs> so, and this is not the first time. Okay, there are quite a few times that this has happened. Tell us a more. I now don't remember. I think uh, I think once it happened at. When we were performing in Purana Kila, I think that is where it had happened. A couple of more times it has happened. Okay. Because mm -hmm. my attire, no long hair, no beard. <laughs> so finally, other people, my management came and rescued me from that. Okay. <laughs> uh, according to you, as a musician who's who's spent a lot of time in the in the world of music and who's seen a lot of uh, popularity, a lot of fame, a lot of limelight. Uh, to youngsters with whom we are communicating now, uh, what do you mean by money, the concept of money and the pursuit of money? Look, I myself have been extremely, uh, what should I say, foolish and um, unwise in handling money. So, when people talk about it, I tell them categorically, I'm not the right person to talk to. So, uh, so that is where things end. So, I tell them, you, you, if you take this up as a profession, then you must uh, do well enough to earn a lot of money. And, uh, but don't get into music only for, the, you know, there have been people who have, Sir, this line may be a hai kya? Sir, ho sakta hai, kisi ko milta hai, kisi ko nahi milta hai. So, should I then take up music? I said, no. <laughs> if you're doing it because of that, then I don't think you will ever do justice to music. So, that's how I uh, try and portray it. So, pursuit of money? Ha. Uh, it was not that. Uh, that. That was not the reason that I took to music. So for me, the way, look, I was a management person. So my uh, thing was sales and marketing. And uh, when I was in my job, I worked for 10 years. I was not doing bad in my job. Okay. But when it came to my music, I could never market it. And at the point that I started, in today's date, if I had started Indian Ocean, then I think we would be a complete failure. At that point of time, I told myself that I have to produce good music and what I believe in. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and if it is good, then people will recognize me. And that is exactly how it happened. Indian Ocean, frankly speaking, did not have good marketing till now. Now what they are doing, I think there's, there's a lot of uh, uh, marketing that they are doing. But uh, not till the time that I was there. Mm -hmm. Certain things happen, but they happen naturally. Say a film got made on us for leaving home, yeah. if you are aware of that. So we did not go around looking for a filmmaker to come and uh, shoot us or make a documentary. So this person, Jaydeep Verma, he himself came that, listen, I want to make a documentary on you. So I was one of the people who was very skeptical about it. And I said, that no, no untruth should be shown. But ultimately, when he showed us the rough cut, it did. I think it is. It's a very nicely produced film. Mm -hmm. So, but we never went around looking for people. Come mm -hmm. out for film, bana. No, never. It happened naturally. It happened naturally. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. It was a pleasure talking to you too.
Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to press the bell icon so that you get notified whenever we publish a report. Follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Send GET updates to 982104573 for news and analysis you are not told. Visit our website empirediaries.com for in-depth reports and columns. Stay informed, stay awake and think critically.